I first want to apologize for the Southern boy's mispronunciation of D. Bouillet, French, and just saying it like it's pronounced in Southern English, the buyer. It's D. Bouillet is the proper pronunciation of this company since it's French. We're going to be unboxing something that we cook with. A new pan. This is the Meyer carbon steel pan that I ordered directly from them online. A while to get here for uh, Thanksgiving, and they were apparently very busy. I just sent them a reminder, but just unpacking it. And my plan here is this pan needs to be seasoned. Uh, this will be the highest quality carbon steel pan I think I, I own. I own one. I'll show it right here. I bought it about a little over a year ago, and I've enjoyed it. Uh, this carbon steel small fry skillet, skillet pan. It is a uh, Zacharan. It came pre-seasoned. It was really good and I had to re-season it now that I've learned how carbon steel works. And I recently bought a carbon steel wok which I've seasoned and I love it. I also own an iron wok that I use more outside grilling. But uh, we'll be seasoning this this video, uh, just kind of unboxing it, getting everything out of the way. Wrapped up in nice paper, made in France. <coughs> Excuse me, wall wrong. I think it's been coated with uh, beeswax. And I've kind of watched, I, I bought the, the uh, 11 inch, got some good weight to it, with the stainless handle. Um, they say you shouldn't put the non-stainless one in the oven, but I've watched a number of people on YouTube and they say really, it's up to you, that it doesn't cause any problems that they knew of. But what I'll be doing here is I'll be getting the beeswax off of it and uh, washing it under really hot water and uh, I'm going to come in here and do a close-up right now of the pan. Just give me a second, sorry for the... As you can see, it's a... Now it's, it's going to completely change colors once I do it. I'm going to do the oven method because I have an electric cooktop. I had a, a gas one like I've had in some of my previous houses. I would do it on the gas top, but I'm gonna do it the oven method. Uh, and you can stay tuned and watch that. Uh, of course, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna show clips of that process. But uh, here we go. I'm now getting ready to wash it. Well, I'm getting my water nice and hot. I am using soap. This will probably be the first and I hope the last time I ever use soap on this pan. After I get it seasoned, I plan to just wash it with hot water. But I've gotta get the beeswax out of the yeah, off of here with as hot water as I can. I'm using a, just using a sponge that has a, one of those scrubby sides, medium grade. You can see the water sheening up. Second, in the hot water, and do this once or twice more. The guy says you really don't have to get 100% of it off to season it. Just the majority of it. He says it's not worth it to spend that much effort. A lot of it will cook off over time, but you won't get a good seasoning on it. There's too much of it's on there. You'll have to re-season it. So, that's why I'm trying to do a good job here the first time. And now I'm just going to dry it. And while it's still warm, we will start seasoning it. Okay, I've dried the pan good. 
And the method I'm going to use is I'm going to use uh, basically uh, buzzy wax that I ordered off Amazon. And it's just a really good way to get a thin coat. What I used to do, or what I kind of didn't do right on some of my seasoning of my last carbon steel pans is uh, that definition of thin coat is so open. What I thought was thin was probably much more than thin. It was thicker than thin. It's a little bit more oil than I should have. And if you get too much oil, it causes a lot of problems. Uh, with the seasoning process. So, and you can see some stuff coming off the pan for sure. Which I assume is a mixture of the beeswax and oxidation. But we're just gonna get a nice thin coat all over the pan and I'm heating up my oven, and we're going to go to three, I mean, excuse me, 475, and we're going to go for one hour upside down, this direction, and it's going to cook for an hour. Then I'll let the pan cool down, and I'm going to do this three times. So, I'm go back again on the bottom side. I will probably coat the bottom side three times. It'll get a natural thing on it and you don't cook on that side anyway. You just need your non-stick ability on this side, the inside. A new pan it does have a little, a little bit of scratch there, but heck, it was gonna get that way anyway when I started using it. And a little scratching won't hurt it. So now we're gonna go into the oven, as I said, upside down. I'll show that to you on the camera. Here, hold on, I gotta move the camera. So it's gone into my oven. As you can see, upside down. Well, as you can see, we've just taken our first hour. Uh, of course, it's hot. That's why I have this heat thing on the, on the hand, handle. We're still, you can see the color's totally changed. We're cooling down now, but we're totally a different color than we were. We're a nice grayish color, but it needs to continue to cool before we do layer two. Okay, I've seasoned my pan. What I'm going to do here is the... Uh, just the fried egg test. Uh, of course, it's just the initial seasoning with three layers. So it's gonna get better over time after many, many layers. But this is just the initial seasoning. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little, we're just gonna cook one egg. I'm gonna go ahead and season up the egg like I would eat it. I'll probably end up eating it, I won't throw it away. And Okay, just gonna let that set up. This handle's still hot. That's why I have this pot holder on it because it came out of the oven not long ago. It cooled down a little bit, but not all the way. So we're gonna let this egg set up a little bit. Then I'm gonna flip it over easy, kind of the way I like them. And we'll see how bad it sticks. Hopefully it won't stick too bad. I'm planning to make this one of my one of my egg pans. I'm going from pure uh, from a lot of disposable pans where you buy the non-stick ones about every three to five years to just permanent pans and getting rid of all non-stick ones and we'll be using st good quality stainless steel and carbon steel pans. Um, from now on, I do own a couple of iron, uh, cast iron pans as well. So, uh, 
Okay, there's the egg cook. I did not do over easy. Just kind of broke it and kind of did a semi scramble. But there we are. Well, after seasoning the Debayer Mineral B Element Pro, I think I'm going to like this pan. I think uh, time will tell. Uh, it's going to be a little more maintenance than the stainless steel, the high quality stainless steel that I've been going to. Uh, I'm just kind of buying those piece by piece as I need them in my set. I did have some uh, stainless steel stock pots and uh, pans, but um, I'm getting better frying pans and saute pans. So, uh, so far, I, I prefer the stainless. It's a little more money than the carbon steel because the carbon steel is more maintenance. Now, I love my carbon steel wok. Uh, I, I really love it, but uh, time will tell. But I think it's going to be a good addition compared to uh, the temporary pans of the non-stick ones that you have to buy every three to five years.